Okay guys, in this video I want to explain you why LookDevX is really great. I know it's a new tool developed by Autodesk uh, Maya that is unfortunately really badly uh, marketing. Okay, uh, but it's really in in-depth development and powerful. You all know the good Hypershed, but we are all aware that it's pretty old and old. <laughs> okay, it's why there is LookDevX. The first mistake about LookDevX, launch it. Most of the um, CGI artists I know don't understand, and it's normal, why the hell there is USD. You see, there is two things. You, you have only two choices. USD and Material X. What the hell that mean? Yes, a bit complicated. Uh, USD, you know, it's a new universal standard format for exchange about modeling. You have to convert everything in your scene. It's pretty heavy, okay. Uh, but it's great for studio and production when you have heavy scene and you have to manage sharing, etc. But as an individual and freelance artist, most of the time you don't care about that. So let's say this don't exist. You have the Material X1, which is <laughs> false too. <laughs> uh, material X is the same. It's a kind of uh, Uber universal material. But the problem you will say, okay, I'm working with Arnold in Maya, which is normal, and I don't want to use Material X because I don't know the node, I want the I, I color correct and because I'm at is with and it's logical. One more time, it's badly explained. You can use Arnold inside this uh, slot here. Let's say this one is only if you work in USD. You need to have USD geometry to work and to apply your material. But if you don't care about USD, just choose Material X. Material X, here, look, if you, so you have a board, I will not explain the, the things, it's pretty simple, okay, it's a board and you create node and connect. If I hit tab, of course you have the, I don't know why, the Maya one, yes, Blin, Lambert, all the good ones are here. Uh, you also have, I don't even know where is, uh, yes, the UI, your Material X are here. B X D F. What the fuck is this name? You, you, you don't think they can rename MTLX or something PBR? I, I, I know as a new user, it's <laughs> what you don't know where to go. Anyway, what I want to show you is the simplicity Arnold. Here you have everything about your Arnold. The exact same you have in Hypershade. All the node you know, all the Arnold node are already convert to material and existing in LookDevX. So it's familiar for you. Okay. You can even go um, in Windows, not library. Maybe if that's easier for you and you have everything for you. Yeah. So let's create an Arnold uh, shading standard surface. It's all the same, but just not the prefix I, AI, okay? So the AI color correct is just the color correct. Um, the first strange thing is when you create a shader, you don't have the shader. You have a kind of group and you have to click, double click on it to access the shader. At the first time you say, what the fuck is that? Why I need to go into a sub to have my shading. It's, it's boring, it's complicated. No, in fact, it's crazily powerful. It's difficult to explain, but it's all the game changer uh, compared to Hypershell, where um, if I create an I standard surface, I, I don't have a parent or a group. Oh, maybe. What? Okay, it's directly my shadow, but it's all the problem. I don't have a container. And you all know that if you create a crazy, um, uh, I don't know, if you create a crazy shadow, okay, 
if I, t I ask you to duplicate it, you will say, oh no, please, I, I don't want to duplicate my shadow. <laughs> it's too complicated because you have to go here and go to duplicate, maybe shading networks, and it will duplicate all the nodes, overlap them, rename them, and it's a pain. You have all the nodes here. Uh, you have your eye color correct, your image, everything is here. Oh my God. It's all the uh, uh, the fix with this main document. Okay. Let's say it's something easy. You can have 100 nodes inside this document. Let's say this is uh, the shader and this is the material. Okay. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, plastic. Okay. You have the plastic. You just hit Ctrl D and you have plastic too. You understand? It's way more easy to manage. So at the first time, it's what the fuck? Why, why I have to duplicate? But in fact, it's way, way so powerful and fix all this uh, duplication problem. And you go inside and you do your stuff. First powerful things. Uh, then at this stage, you know already everything. You have your surface shader. You have to apply here. So just right click. Uh, I send existing. Maybe it's not the best way to do it. I think it works better <laughs> here. Uh, yes, existing plastic. Okay, you have to go to the outliner. I'm not sure that works in viewport for now. But here, if you go to assign existing, you see plastic standard surface. Okay, great, that works. And all the same, you have some attribute. Don't use the attribute editor here. Uh, I advise you, I will not dock it. I click uh, still keep it floating. But, you know, let's put a nice color. And that works. OK, so uh, the first uh, advantage is that. The second one is everything is finally working in viewport. Crazy. Maybe I will <laughs> dock it finally. Uh, just look. I will dock it here. We don't need that. I will try to maybe demonstrate that with an other sphere. Okay, come on. On this one, I will create a um, traditional high standard surface. I will put a blue color. So this one is a classical one. Look, you all know the tricks. Um, so this I populate here. Let's grab uh, quickly um, a texture. I don't have texture, but this will do the job. Okay, if you put this in your base color, and of course you activate not the writing, but Come on, okay. You have the texture. Ah, with some that works. But if I go the AE color correct, I plug that here. I plug that because I want to color correct my texture. Boom. All right. One node, you break the viewport display. Ah, with some. Okay, you break the viewport display, and now you don't know what you're fucking doing. You have a thumbnail here that works. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I have to launch Arnold and go to render. Boring. I'm going here. Same thing. Just have a look. Uh, the same texture. I use this one. I drag and drop. Drag and drop is working. I have my standard surface. I will plug into base color. Or maybe I will just expand base color. Okay, so that works. Okay. And you understand? So no I A now, I just hit color correct. You have the name, you have the standard, you have the Arnold, it's a bit, uh, a lot of node, but you know, uh, color correct from Arnold. So you found the color correct, all the same settings. So as I told you, it's really easy to learn, nothing complicated because it's just input output of the node you already know. But the powerful thing is that now, that don't break the viewport. The viewport is working, the lighting is better, and I can come here and say, uh, let's use switch. Okay, everything will work now in viewport. And just for that, it's way more powerful. Uh, okay, I will try to do something a bit better. Let's go to um, Wizix, uh, some texture. 
some fingerprint so I will my shader is here load down the base duplicate the color correct and put this into specular roughness so my PC is a bit slow but uh, that works great okay so now uh, of course you have to set it to raw always the same thing all it is here you have your roughness here in the correct right and you can so it's really powerful at least i don't test but i know that you can create a really complex shader and you will have a nice feedback in the viewport i don't need to render it's yes it's real time okay oh it's composed uh, now the the first strange thing is compared to hypershade you don't have this kind of library with your asset that don't exist you only have the board part uh, but now your shadows are stored here oh come on okay uh, my tile x this is just a kind of big container to say okay i use uh, look dev x <laughs> and inside what interests me is i have the plastic guys and all the nodes are here you can duplicate manage in like any component and you can save load reference import share okay so this in fact here i'm just using look dev x which is you can call it uh, hypershade 2.0 if you want with arnold node okay it's just the simplest way to work with new maya shading after that you can use this board but instead here is Arnold okay uh, with the standard surface it, which means if I send that to very Unreal Engine or uh, Renderman that will not work I think but all the purpose is to use that with uh, if you use instead of using Arnold you can use Material X which are standard which mean um, look at open beer or standard surface I don't know anyway here yeah, it's it's easy because it's the pretty the same structure uh, the same structure as an I standard okay shin soft SSS transmission everything is here you can plug image but this shader is will have the same render in very order man Unreal Engine any software that support Material X, you understand? Uh, so this is the uh, most powerful things about Material X, but you can work with Arnold. Okay, and in plus of that, all this workflow. So here, we don't have any USD things. USD is just um, really quickly if you create. So you, here in Windows, you have the USD. Okay, so I have nothing. I will create a new layer. So here I create a USD, which is empty. I can say, okay, I want uh, this sphere. Right. You duplicate as up oh, and it duplicates. So it's a bit complicated because now you have two sphere, I do one. This sphere is not anymore. If I right click, I can edit vertex, do bevel, anything. It's baked into in a package into an USD convert. It's like an interactive FBX if you want but still inside the viewport okay and now i can come here and i sign a new material uh, material x open pbr okay and i have one more material here you see new tabs it's use the same engine which is look dev x but for usd it's another thing i want to show you one last time look dev x is not related to usd okay it just you use for USD but it's not related but now the things is come on uh, <laughs> here is my Maya Geo okay which is saved into my MB you have material X which is saved to MB but uh, will be soon be able to be saved as external file uh, I don't know let's say mtlx okay and file for my shader and then you have your usd which is saved <laughs> as a point usd which is another file too. yes that start to be a bit complex 
Uh, I try to demystify the thing and just to show you in some minutes uh, the essential of why uh, look that X is crazily fucking powerful. M of course, there is some bugs. Of course, it's still in development. Uh, you don't have any tutorial on it, but if you understand the, the simple part, uh, you can already use it in production. I think that that works well. I use it on my Envit. Uh, yes, I will try to show you to finish this video. Uh, for my Envit script, I create a library. Okay, as a scripter, what I want. Uh, my problem is people always ask me on my script, oh my god, you are on Arnold, uh, can you convert all your script for Vere, for Renderman, for Redshift? It's impossible for me to manage all of that. But what if I create USD Material X? That means someone can even take my Envet library, cr um, look at this asset, and load and use it in Udini with Mantra or Solaris, I don't know, or even in Blender, and it will have the exact same look than this. So it's standard, standard, okay. It's why I am jump in it. And if I uh, open it, okay, come in, I will show you. So I use um, Arnold, but in USD, because I, I just explained you, Envit is working on USD file, but you know, with uh, true geometry, which is this one that will work too. It's the same. And inside I have my three material. Let's have a look at the leaves, show in look dev X. Okay. And you create your, your things. Okay. So yes. So here it's about proxy and thing like that. So we don't have um, an exact look in the viewport, but uh, that's working great. Okay, so I hope it's, uh, this video will help you to understand this uh, new tool in Maya. See you.